Hi, I'm John Silcox with the Fairfax County Health Department. I'm here with Ron Campbell, who's one of our senior environmental health specialists, and we're here to talk a little bit about food safety. This is actually Food Safety Month, Ron, and um, it's a good opportunity to remind our viewers that uh, food safety really starts at home. Why is that so critical? Well, it does start at home, John, and uh, I want to remind everyone that uh, the CDC says that about 48 million people a year will suffer from foodborne illness, and uh, 3,000 people may die from foodborne illness. So um, food safety does start at home. There's a lot of risks uh, at home that we really don't think about, um, and um, this month is a good time to just kind of raise awareness for the general public about food safety in general. And not only is it Food Safety Month, but we know this is also back to school time. So we've got a lot of families getting ready to send kids back to school and they'll be packing them nutritious lunches to take with them. But we want to make sure that they're doing that in a safe way too. So what are some of the uh, key food safety principles that people need to know about when they're preparing those lunches for school? Well, whenever we talk about food safety, John, we always talk about clean, separate, cook, and chill. And clean begins with washing our hands. And <clears throat> we want folks to wash their hands for 20 seconds scrub in between your fingers, get your cuticles, 20 seconds, sing happy birthday twice to yourself, uh, sing the ABC song. Uh, but it's important that we do wash our hands before we handle any, any food. Uh, we want to make sure that our, our preparation area, our cutting boards and our, our uh, countertop is, uh, is clean. So that should be washed with, with hot soapy water as well before we start any food preparation. Uh, once we get ready to really prepare the food, uh, we talk about separate. We want folks to uh, keep their raw meats particularly uh, uh, separate from uh, vegetables and fruits that they might be putting in, in the kids' lunches. So maybe use separate cutting boards uh, to do your preparation. Um, as we get into the, the chillier weather, um, we're going to maybe we're going to pack a pack a soup for, for our child. Um, we want to make sure that we we want it hot, so we're going to make it hot at home, but we want it to be hot when the child gets to use it. So we want to make sure we cook it to 165 degrees so that over time, it might be two or three hours before the, the child actually eats the soup, it may cool down a little bit, but we don't want it to cool below 140 degrees. So it's important that if we prepare hot food that it be 165 degrees before we pack it. Uh, and then, of course, most of what we're packing is... Uh, um, our sandwiches, probably, you know, turkey or ham, maybe some peanut butter and jellies. Uh, and and uh, it's important that we keep those cold. So we recommend, we suggest use a, a, a cold um, or a, a soft pack lunch, lunch carrier um, rather than a paper bag. Uh, we're trying to keep our food out of the danger zone. And the danger zone is the temperature range where bacteria grows very quickly and, and of course can make people sick. So room temperature is in the danger zone. Paper bags don't offer any refrigeration or any cooling methods. So use a soft pack um, container, uh, gel packs, freezer packs, maybe throw a couple of uh, frozen juice boxes in there to act as your, as your, uh, as your cooling uh, mechanism in your, in your lunch box. Um, and then, uh, you know, make sure that, uh, that your child is, uh, is keeping the lunchbox, uh, you know, not into direct sunlight in, in, in the classroom or something like that. Because it's important that we keep our food, keep the lunch cool until the uh, child gets to eat it. So you've given us some good food safety tips for preparing lunches at home. We also know that one of the critical food safety um, steps is to make sure you're cooking your food to the right temperature. So why is that so important and what should people be doing? Well, yep. Yeah. Cook, uh, you know, we talk about clean, separate, cook, and chill, and uh, uh, there's a kind of a corollary golden rule that goes with, with those uh, four concepts, and uh, that's keep food hot and keep food cold. Keep your cold, cold food cold. Um, and hot means cooking it, cooking it to the right temperature. I'll ask people, uh, you know, how do you know when your chicken is done? And they'll say, well, I cut it, and it's not pink on the inside, it's done. Well, the fact of the matter is we need to cook our food to a temperature. You can't judge doneness by how it looks. And the temperature we cook to is the temperature that kills the bacteria that make us sick. So you can't judge 165 degrees for chicken, for example, by looking and seeing if it's not pink on the inside anymore. So 
use a food thermometer. Uh, you can get them at any, you know, any of the grocery stores and, and department stores, certainly, but use a food thermometer. There are uh, certain temperatures that we need to cook to. We offer, a, or we have available, if you want to stop by the uh, health department, we have a, uh, actually a refrigerator magnet that has the, uh, the correct temperatures on it. So uh, very convenient in the, in the kitchen while we're cooking. Uh, the other part of the golden rule is keep foods cold, keep cold foods cold. And that refers to our refrigeration. Um, 41 degrees or less is the ideal temperature for our refrigerator because at those temperatures, bacteria doesn't grow as well. Uh, the bacteria that can make us sick. So we want to make sure our refrigerator is 41 degrees or less. Well, a lot of refrigerators have a little knob in the back that says colder this way, uh, but there's no mention of 41 degrees. So a refrigerator thermometer um, is an ideal tool to, to put in your refrigerator so you can help determine if your refrigerator really is cold. So uh, clean, separate, Cook and chill uh, really are the guides for uh, for good food safety at home. And you mentioned uh, keeping those uh, foods cold in the refrigerator. One of the things that uh, you often think about with leftovers is how long should I be keeping this? Uh, when should I throw it out? So what is maybe the rule of thumb there? Well, a good a good rule for that, John, would be uh, um, no more than a total of seven days in the refrigerator. So if I open a package of deli meat today. It's today plus six is how long I should keep the, keep the deli meat in the refrigerator. Uh, anything over seven days really should be discarded because uh, although 41 does prevent the growth of, of most of the bacteria we're concerned with, there are bacteria that does grow at 41 degrees or less after a period of time. We want to avoid getting into that point. So seven days or less, uh, should be when we get rid of our, our leftovers. And we can't trust the smell test on that, right? No, no smell tests. So, uh, Brian, you've given us some great food safety tips, and you also gave us an easy way to remember this. So it's clean, separate, cook, and chill. Can you just quickly go back over what those four things are? Sure, mean? sure. Clean, we wash our hands, we make sure our, uh, our prep area is being cleaned uh, with hot soapy water before we start, start our food prep. We separate to prevent cross-contamination, um, so we might, we might use separate cutting boards for our meat and for our, our veggies and our fruits, for example, for lunches. Uh, we cook, we cook to a temperature, use a food thermometer. Uh, we can't judge, judge doneness by, by how the food looks. And then chill is uh, really our refrigerator. We want to keep, make sure we keep our foods cold Golden rules, keep food, hot food hot, keep cold food cold. Um, refrigerators need to be at 41 degrees. Use a refrigerator thermometer to determine that. All right. Well, you've given us some great food safety tips to keep in mind as we're getting ready to send kids back to school with lunches and, and meals. So we thank you for watching, and we encourage you to find out more food safety information on our website, which is fairfaxcounty.gov slash hd slash food. Thanks again, and we hope you have a wonderful school year.